Francis Ford Coppola's classic The Godfather contains a wide selection of memorable characters such as Don Vito Corleone, Michael Corleone, Sonny, Fredo, Kay, Don Barzini, Tom Hagen, Luca Brasi, Salvatore Tessio, Johnny Fontaine and much, much more. They are played impeccably by the actors, many of whom were novices or not well known at the time but have since become veterans thanks to their iconic portrayals. I've made videos on several of these characters and will continue to do so, so check out the channel and feel free to subscribe if you like what you see. Many of the characters who survived the ordeals of the first film played roles in the sequel, The Godfather Part 2. However, one iconic character, Peter Clemenza, played by Richard S. Castellano, did not. Clemenza was one of the original two Capo regimes in the Corleone family, the other being Tessio. He is a significant supporting character in the first film playing a key role in aiding Sonny and Michael Corleone after the shooting of Vito, mentoring Michael on how to take out Salozzo and using his people to hide the gun in the lavatory so Michael could kill Salozzo. It is he who mentored Rocco Lampon, who would go on to become a key figure of the Corleone criminal empire, and he is thought to have been a key figure for the Corleones in the Five Family War. When Michael Corleone replaced his father Vito as head of the family, Clemenza enthusiastically requested the opportunity to start his own family, as did Tessio, but both reluctantly agreed to wait and be patient, in spite of the Barzini family taking over their territories. Though there were implications that Clemenza would betray the Corleone family to their enemies in frustration of how events were playing out, he actually remained loyal, unlike Tessio and personally murdered Carlo Rizzi and Victor Stracci as part of a series of events known as the Baptism of Fire, the climax of The Godfather. At a meeting in the film's final scene with Michael, Rocco, Al Neri and Clemenza, the big man kisses Michael and addresses him as Don Corleone, cementing the fact that Michael has become his father's successor and head of the family, proving himself to his subjects. And all of these characters in the meeting are in the second film, which follows Michael attempting to work out who attempted to assassinate him. But the only one missing is Clemenza. Instead, it is briefly mentioned that for his loyalty and years of service, he was given control of the Corleone family in New York, running things from the old Corleone compound, while Michael branched out to projects in places like Nevada and Cuba. We also find out that he died in between the events of the first film and the second film with his position being succeeded by Frank Pentangeli, his loyal lieutenant and longtime friend. In fact, much of the plot of The Godfather Part II involves Pentangeli testifying against his boss Michael Corleone, mistakenly thinking that Michael tried to have him assassinated. Pentangeli's testimony could have sent Michael to jail for life, but he ends up denying his own written testimony in these Senate hearings after seeing Michael walk into the proceedings with Pentangeli's own brother. Pentangeli eventually takes his own life, after Tom Hagen meets him and subtly tells him his family would not come to harm if he ends his life for his treason. In The Godfather Part 2, it is implied that Clemenza died under suspicious circumstances, as when Freda Corleone mentions he died of a heart attack, Corleone hitman Willy Chichi says that was no heart attack, implying that there may have been foul play, but it is never elaborated upon, not in the film at least. Interestingly, Clemenza actor Richard Castellano himself died of a heart attack at the age of 55. Peter Clemenza is in The Godfather Part II, but only in the flashback timeline which charts the rise of Vito Corleone, showing the Don's early years as a poor immigrant as he gradually became a local mafia boss. Clemenza is played by Bruno Kirby, and in fact it was he who kick-started Vito's career as a criminal after initially asking Vito to hide some guns in order to prevent them from being discovered by the police. Clemenza returns the favour by stealing a rug for Vito and thus begins a partnership of crime that accumulates to Vito being established as the leader of his group with Peter a loyal follower. I love Clemenza. He's one of my personal favourite characters from The Godfather. He's incredibly likeable. I just love this big, chunky dude with his thick Italian-American New York accent and fedora. He kind of looks like the quintessential La Costa Nostra mobster. The legendary Chicago mobster Al Capone was also from New York. And I always thought we really missed a trick with Castellano not playing Capone in his life. He seemed perfect for the role. In spite of being a stone-cold killer, you do feel that Clemenza is the kind of guy you can have a laugh with the kind of guy who would cook for the lads and tell some great stories while he did so, but would be able to switch to mobster mode in an instant. 
Known for his jovial nature, street smarts, storytelling abilities and great sense of humour, Clemenza could get a laugh out of Don Vito and even the most serious Michael. His absence in the 1950s timeline in The Godfather Part 2 is felt, but probably for most people didn't feel that impactful, nowhere near at least compared to the absence of Robert Duvall in the third film. And that might be in part to the fact that The Godfather Part 2 is still an incredible film without the character, a masterpiece whose new characters like Pentangeli and Hyman Roth more than make up for Clemenza's absence. It may interest you to learn then that Clemenza was originally supposed to be in The Godfather Part 2, not just in the flashback timeline I mean, but in Michael's story, the present day timeline, with Castellano returning to reprise his role. In fact, he would have had a bigger role in the second film than he did in the first. So why wasn't he in the movie? Well, it came down to a dispute between Castellano and Paramount Pictures, but not over money apparently, not totally anyway, which is what you might expect, but rather it was over the character's dialogue and the amount of weight Castellano would need to gain for the role. Castellano, who improvised the famous line in the first film, leave the gun, take the cannoli, reportedly wanted to have a friend of his rewrite his dialogue. Coppola, for example, is quoted as saying Castellano insisted that his lines were improved, so he was written out of the film and his character was replaced by Frank Pentangeli. So all of what happens to Frank in the film, the murder attempt, the testifying, the suicide, all of that would have happened to Clemenza in the original plans for the film. Pentangeli basically is Clemenza. However, according to Castellano himself, whose widow, by the way, claimed that he was the nephew of infamous mob boss Paul Castellano, the actor was unhappy with the portrayal of his character in the script for part two. Castellano stated in an interview, talking about his character and director Francis Ford Coppola, I saw Clemenza as a teacher. He teaches how to make spaghetti, how to use the gun. He can't tell me that Clemenza, after years of loyalty to the old man, would go in and testify against organised crime, not unless you prove to me that he had become a fearful man, that he had become a betrayer. The demands on me were impossible. I had settled on a price and everybody else's was settled upon mine. He had me losing weight to play Clemenza as a young man. I was down to 194 pounds. When I received the script five minutes later, it had me rolling in at 300 pounds. After Castellana bowed out of the picture, he said that Francis Coppola promised to tell the press that he had turned down the film for artistic reasons. He continues, The next thing, I saw Coppola quoted as saying that I asked for more money than anyone else, that I asked to rewrite the script. Once the lie gets out, the lie is told, and it takes. So there you have it. Interestingly, and this is going to sound crazy, but it is true, Castellano was actually the highest paid actor in The Godfather. It makes sense in a way. Most of the actors in the film were unknowns at the time, Brando was making a comeback with the picture, yet Castellano was an Oscar nominated actor. The amount is undisclosed, and I doubt he netted more than Marlon Brando, who was paid $250,000 plus a percentage of the film's gross, which netted him an additional $2 million. But if we're talking just salaries, it's widely reported that Castellano actually took home more than anyone else and his increased wage demands and insistence on creative control over his character, plus his refusal to gain the weight to play Clemenza again, meant he was axed from the film's sequel. Of course, he has his versions of the events, which I've mentioned already, but it is what it is. You know, I'm torn on Clemenza not being in The Godfather Part 2. I loved the actress portrayal of the character. I love the character himself. However, the Godfather 2 is a perfect film, the movie is not harmed by Clemenza's absence and Michael V. Gazzo gave a magnificent performance as his replacement Frank Pentangeli. It's one of those situations where issues occurring in reality end up affecting what we see in the film for the better, perhaps. With Robert Duvall exiting The Godfather Part 3 being an example of when these kind of situations harms a film. I have absolutely no problem with Pentangeli, but the thing is though, he was a new character. He was someone who was instantly shady because we weren't sure whether he tried to have Michael killed. He's a new character who we all of a sudden are told was really close to Vita Corleone and had been in the family for years, and all of a sudden he's in charge of what used to be the Corleone crime family. Clemenza on the other hand is someone we knew from the first film. He made us laugh, he was an absolute badass, and was like everyone's favourite uncle. 
Not to mention he turned out to be the loyal one between Tessio and himself, when you'd bet your bottom dollar that if there was going to be a traitor, it'd be him. For him to be in part two, for him to turn against Michael and testify against him after thinking Michael tried to have him killed, for him to then do a 180 and keep Michael out of jail and then kill himself after a deeply touching scene between him and Tom Hagen, would have been emotionally devastating. It's probably the one big difference between Pentangeli dying in part two and Clemenza. Pentangeli's death is merely interesting, and most of the emotional aspects of the film's closing stages comes from the death of Fredo, and the flashback to when everyone was young and happy. But if the original plans of the film occurred, we'd also experience the deeply saddening death of Clemenza, the last of the original Corleone soldiers, who didn't even really outright betray the Corleones when you think about it. It wasn't as if he went and tried to have Michael killed or did a deal with his enemies. He legitimately thought that Michael tried to have him killed, so in a way it was a big misunderstanding that perhaps stemmed from a rare moment of weakness from Michael, by not allowing Pentangeli to go after the Risotto brothers, and a showcase of strength from Michael's enemies. Although saying that, Pentangeli was facing lengthy jail time if he didn't testify, so I guess the murder attempt on him isn't the defining factor of his betrayal. He was still gonna flip, I guess. Imagine the scene between Pentangeli and Hagen, only this time with Clemenza instead, talking about how the Corleones used to be great, it used to be like the Roman Empire, it resonates a lot more because we've seen Clemenza experience that peak of the Corleones that he's talking about. We would have felt that rush of nostalgia, as we do feel with the flashback at the end of the film where we see the likes of Tessio and Sonny. And then imagine seeing Clemenza's dead body in the bath with his wrists split open. It would have perhaps surpassed the emotional weight of Fredo's death, who most people saw as an imbecile anyway. But not Clemenza, he was no imbecile. And the fact that Michael Corleone would end up essentially killing him and Tessio the two original Capo regimes, would show just how far things have gone, how far he strayed from his father, killing his dad's two best friends. Clemenza's death, self-inflicted death, I might add, which resonates with the movie's themes of self-destruction, would have truly symbolised the end of the original Corleone regime. It would have added a beloved character to Michael's list of victims who were ironically part of his family, or in the family, like Kay, Tessio, Carlo and Fredo. So as you can see, The Godfather Part 2 would have been a lot more impactful with Clemenza included, but in a way, the film does the character a better service by leaving him out. There's something quite nice in knowing that Clemenza, after everything that happened in the first film, actually died completely loyal to the Corleones, and his reputation was never destroyed. It may have been a bit too on the nose as well to have both Tessio and then Clemenza betray Michael, and it was nice that at least one of them remained strong and firm, rather than, for the lack of a better word, ruin an established character in the sequel, like a lot of films have done to beloved characters, they just killed him, left his reputation intact, and gave us a new one instead to betray Michael. Interestingly, the actual death of Peter Clemenza, the way he died, is detailed in a sequel to Mario Puzo's The Godfather called The Godfather Returns by Mark Weingardner, and it's one of the best scenes in the book, as this video is already long, Clemenza's death will be something I'll cover in another video, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button down below so you don't miss out. So what do you think about all of this? Would you have liked to see Clemenza in The Godfather Part 2? Or do you think the movie is better the way it is? Let me know in the comments below, and thanks for watching.